Well, good morning. Uh, I'm delighted to be here to tell you these stories. I was asked to talk about two things here. Uh, one, the debate, um, uh, the public debate, I suppose, about electoral reform, how far back it goes, and what the main themes were. And then secondly, what do we know about public opinion currently as it applies to some of those reforms suggested and, and the reasons for them? Uh, I have no PowerPoint to show you, but everything really I'm about to say is in the handout that was circulated, and therefore I thought it would be better to concentrate on that uh, rather than, uh, rather than uh, a PowerPoint slides. A new experience for me, really, talking without PowerPoint. Uh, I need a button to get me on to the next sentence normally, but uh, let's, let's see what I can do. Our electoral system in, in, uh, in this document uh, is referred to as PRSTV. Uh, in general conversation, of course, it's always referred to as PR, which means proportional representation. Uh, and it's a curiosity, really, why do we have the electoral system we do? Um, I think essentially we have it because all parties to making that decision thought it was very important to protect the Protestant minority, at least in the initial electoral system, if at no other time. And uh, how could that be done? Well, it could be done by using proportional representation because that allows for the representation of, uh, of small groups in principle. How would we do that? Well, using PR. Well, how do we use PR? Well, the British knew one way to use PR. That's the system we have. That's the only system anybody knew. The fact that across Europe there were different systems of PR didn't seem to penetrate because there's this C between Britain and the rest of the continent and it was much bigger then uh, than it is now. Uh, with global warning, it may get bigger again, but at the moment, it's quite, it's quite small. Um, so people didn't really know there was another form of PR. There was any other way to do it. And we've sort of absorbed that because we talk about it as PR, whereas the rest of the world actually doesn't think of it as PR at all. They think of it as the single transferable vote. Because actually, if you want to achieve proportionality, there are probably better ways to do it. Um, easier ways, anyway. Uh, so I'll call it PRSTV, because it is a, a system which aims at a type of proportionality, um, uh, but we know it as STV. Uh, now, it was adopted originally by law, and then it was written into the Constitution. By the time it was written into the Constitution, I think there was a little bit more awareness that there might be different ways to do that, um, but there was very little discussion of it, and, and therefore it, it went through almost on the nod, as it were. The first major debate on electoral reform uh, can be found in the proceedings of the Oroctus. So I recommend anybody to read them. I read them the other day. They were, they were, they were good fun to read. At the end of the 1950s, when Fianna Fáil suggested we would be much better off with the British system. It's probably about the only time Fianna Fáil ever said that, but they said that about the electoral system. I don't mean to make party political points, but I can't resist that. Um, the change... When we vote, we're doing two things. And, and that's very important to keep in mind, and I think that came up implicitly in, in what people were saying. One of the things we do is elect a TD. Um, in our constituency, we elect several, but with our vote, we can only elect one. So we elect a TD, that's what we do. But the story of the election, if you watch it on the television, is partly about electing a TD, who, who will be lifted shoulder high in the traditional acclamation when we get a result. Uh, but the big story is about who's going to be the government. Uh, those are connected, but by a somewhat slender thread. What connects them, basically, is the existence of parties. It's very hard to imagine how elections can work without parties, um, uh, although lots of people seem to think parties are appalling, but try a world without parties. Um, 
So when we elect, we do two things. We elect to TD, but we elect to government. And the link between the two is that we know how that TD will vote when it comes to electing a government. They'll vote for a government of their party. De Valera said in the, in, the, uh, in the Dole in 1958, in the start of the debate on this referendum, that the main question before people at the time of the election is what sort of government will we have for the next five years and what sort of policy it will have. And the notion is that we decide that by voting for a party, by voting for a TD of the party that you want to form the government. They said that's obscured with our current electoral system because we have lots of parties. There were a few more then uh, than subsequently, but probably fewer than we have now. And the upshot of that was that government has to be fudged together sometimes after the election. We'd had lots of minority governments, depending on some independents or, or others, or we had coalition governments where the coalition had to be sewn together after the election. So there was little clarity, really, in the electoral decision. And, uh, and Fianna Fáil argued that, that we need clarity. And we'll get much better clarity if we can have an electoral system that pushes us towards uh, something more like a two-party system, uh, one of which would be Fianna Fáil, and presumably the other of which would be somebody else. So they thought that that would be more democratic, it would be clearer, and it would allow the people to vote on a single-party government, basically, of whatever character. They also talked about the multi-seat constituencies that we have, but they didn't say much about that. Um, um, so let me leave that for that particular debate. I think just a, a, a paragraph or so. Now, the people voted uh, to keep the electoral system that we have. So 10 years later, they were asked again. It's not like European referendums, so the year later, uh, this was 10 years later. And the arguments that Jack Lynch then put forward were, were somewhat similar, um, but with a few differences. Uh, one difference was that, whereas de Valera was talking about change to um, almost introduce a two-party system, uh, the system was somewhat simplified, what Brian Farrell called a two-and-a-half party system, um, but it was more like two-and-a-quarter, really. Uh, uh, the argument Lynch made was really that it was necessary to maintain that system, to stop the proliferation of parties. And he made the point that the, the basis of the party system in the Civil War was now waned, or it had been waning. It was less important. And in the absence of that determinant, uh, uh, we could have a proliferation of parties in future, and therefore we needed, um, we needed first past the post in order to maintain a relatively simple party system and give us the stable government that you needed in the modern world where they're deeply involved in economic planning and all sorts of other things. Lynch also criticised the multi-seat uh, constituency, arguing that uh, deputies often within the same party, competed one another to curry favour with voters by pretending to do things for them. Uh, his argument was we needed people to stop wasting everybody's time like that, to concentrate on legislation uh, rather than being errand boys, because it was mostly boys in those days as it is now. The debates in later years have concentrated much more on problems with multi-seat constituencies. We don't hear a lot of debate um, about the need for a two-party system and people to elect the government. Uh, and uh, in most years, we've, we've apparently got further away from that. In 1987, Fine Gael actually put a proposal to change to the German system in their manifesto. But in 1987, Fine Gael didn't win a lot of seats, and therefore uh, they didn't have to implement that. But the argument that people like Garrett Fitzgerald made was that multi-seat constituencies distracted TDs from their proper role as legislators and distracted ministers even more so from their departmental uh, responsibilities. This debate has continued ever since, but I think it's changed a little bit in, in character. Uh, uh, 
uh, Minister Dempsey uh, really popularized that debate uh, around the turn of the century. Uh, and in more recent years, I think with the economic crisis, it's gained a whole new set of legs. And quite often, I think there's an extra element introduced there, um, uh, and such luminaries as Ed Walsh, former president of uh, the University of Limerick, argued that we have the wrong sort of TD altogether. Almost none of them have business experience, so how can you expect them to run the country? Uh, Dan O'Brien, economics editor for the Irish Times, claimed recently that, well, he'd met deputies from across Europe, interviewed them, met ministers from across Europe, and Irish ones were worse than the rest. Their quality was very poor. Um, and therefore, what we need to do is just change the electoral system um, to change the incentives, uh, to change the sort of job that you have to do to get elected, and therefore appeal um, in a different way uh, when, when recruiting TDs and, in principle, get better ones. Around the turn of the century, it was also said, if only we paid TDs properly, um, we'd get much better ones. So we certainly paid them much more properly than we used to, um, but we get essentially the same ones we used to get. Like academics, really. Um, <laughs> Now, what do, what do the people say um, about these things? Let's, let me take single party government first. Uh, it's a curiosity that I only uh, uh, realized in looking at exit polls a few years ago, uh, is that in, I think, 2002 and 2007, most people who voted for Fianna Fáil didn't want a single party government. I think that's remarkable, because it's the assumption that that's what you want, but they didn't. At least when asked in the exit poll what sort of government you want, um, having voted, uh, they preferred uh, Fianna Fáil to be in coalition. The same was true in 2011 with Fine Gael. Most Fine Gael voters wanted them in government with somebody else. So if we changed our electoral system to give us an opportunity for single party government, it would seem that that's not what is implied um, uh, in public opinion. There are questions about the extent to which people actually vote for parties at all. Uh, and maybe that's problematic. There are lots of different ways to ask that question. Um, and, and one way here is to say, well, if your candidate had been running for another party, would you still have voted for them? And 32% said yes, and 35% said no, and 33%, perhaps quite sensibly, said, well, it depends which other party. Uh, but in principle, you know, a large number of people were willing to vote for the same candidate running for a different party. That didn't matter. Now, there are other ways to look at public opinion like that, and these sorts of questions are difficult. But if we just, when people have three candidates from Fianna Fáil to vote for, for instance, do they vote for all of those three candidates? No. Uh, very large numbers don't, and it's the same with the other parties. Uh, which again raises questions about whether people are actually voting for parties when they vote, or the extent to which they are. Briefly, um, a TD's role, we asked a number of questions in the most recent Irish election study, uh, and one of which, the assumption that TDs should provide a local service, that's the sort of messenger um, constituency service function that so many people criticize as being a distraction from the real things that TDs should do. Um, on the whole, about twice as many people think that's the strength of the system as don't think it's the strength of the system. So public seems to think that's, that's a good thing, is to have uh, a TD doing those sorts of uh, jobs. We also asked a question about the work of the TD, and we gave a number of uh, things that TDs should probably do, and asked how important are each of those on a scale of one to five, and the table just shows you the percent scoring, four or five. Uh, representing the needs of individual citizens, 67% uh, thought that was very important. 
70% thought it was very important to get as much as they could for their constituency. But rather more thought working on legislation, developing policies, and, and sort of considering the sorts of things that governments should do was more important, which might be slightly surprising. Now perhaps people think that it's important to say that TDs should be legislators, but when it comes down to it, they want their TD to serve the constituency. So I think we have to take those sorts of comments with a, with a slight pinch of salt. But on the face of it, that's what they say. Finally, on the current system, um, we gave people a number of reforms in, uh, in 2011 because that was a, a reform election. Everybody was talking about reforms and trying to out-reform one another. Uh, The only one, essentially, that um, people didn't agree with, 45% uh, said parties should be forced to nominate more women as candidates, but probably a good few didn't know, so it's, uh, that was pretty even. But uh, replacing the electoral system, very few agreed with that, only a quarter. It was amazing to dismiss a reform at the time of reforms, so I think that's, that's quite remarkable. There was no real public support for changing the electoral system. But that's without a debate, and you're going to debate uh, for some time on this. The Shannon should be abolished, 57%. Um, but a few other things that have come up in the previous uh, uh, talks, experts who are not TDs should be brought into the cabinet. Three quarters thought that was a good idea. Um, uh, cabinet ministers should step down as TDs to run their departments. 60% uh, agreed with that. 77% thought the number of TDs should be significantly reduced. Of course, if we only had 50 TDs, um, we'd have to take whatever we could get when uh, establishing uh, a cabinet, unless we made some of those other changes. But that's a, a sort of sketchy view of, of public opinion. Thank you.